There are five things that nearly every wealthy person does that you can start doing today that will allow you to achieve more wealth over your career. I would say that every wealthy person does these five things, but there's always that one exception to the rule. So that's why I'm saying 99% of wealthy people do this. And let me start by talking about number one, which is eliminating the idea of balance from your life. People love to talk about this idea of balance and having a balanced life, a well-rounded life where you have time for fun, you have time for yourself, you have time to work, and you have time for your health, and you want to make sure you have time for all of these things, that way you can do all of these things and succeed with them. The problem is, for 99% of people, when you try to succeed at all of these things, you succeed at none of these things. Now, I'm not here to tell you how you should live your life, but I'll tell you the things that I did. Because when I was starting off as an entrepreneur, my life circle didn't look like this. Let me just erase the whole thing. It looked like this. And inside was one thing, work. And that's it. Now, I don't recommend this, but this is what I did. I was working very commonly 20-hour days. I was going to school. And all I did was go to school, and I would work on my business, and that's it. And that would mean that I would get maybe four hours of sleep a night. Now, my body can't handle that anymore, but I went through years where I would only sleep four hours of sleep a night. If I slept four hours, I would get a full night of rest. And all I did was I was working, and I was working on my business, and I was going to school, and that was it. I wasn't hanging out with my friends, I wasn't going to parties, I was in college, I was hosting the parties, but I wasn't going to parties. I wasn't doing the things that other people were doing. I wasn't going on trips, I wasn't going out to eat at restaurants, I was working. Most of my time was working. There was no balance. Yeah, I would go to the gym. That was important to me. I found some time to go to the gym. But I wasn't hanging out with people and doing all the fun things that most college people were doing like everybody else. The majority of my time was working. Today, I still work a lot, but I prioritize a lot of other things in my life now too. I spend a lot of time with my family now and friends. I do a lot more of this now than I did before because this is more important to me. I spend more time on my health. I make sure that I get more than four hours of sleep a night because my body cannot do what I was doing when I was in my early 20s. I also spend a lot more time now thinking and taking care of myself. I do a lot more of these things even though I still work a lot. And so I manage my time differently because there are things that I do with my time. There's two different types of currencies that you can invest when it comes to your success, your time and your money. Well, when it comes to my time, I still don't like blowing my time doing dumb things. I watched my first Netflix TV show ever just recently after the Thanksgiving holiday because, well, I got sick and I couldn't really do much. So my wife said, well, this is a great time for you to watch some TV. I had some other things planned, but I was really not feeling that good. I was out. I was pretty much just laying down the whole time because I felt weak. And so my wife used this as a time for us to watch TV. And I watched a show called Wednesday on Netflix. It was a lot of fun to watch. I enjoyed it. But that was my first time ever, ever completing a TV show on Netflix. I like watching movies, but a movie is a movie. You watch it once and you're done. I don't watch TV shows. This is my first time doing that. When you try to do everything, you will end up achieving nothing. And if you want to live a balanced life, then the best thing for you to do is to live an imbalanced life today because the imbalance today will allow you to have more balance later. I have the ability now to work way less and do other things to create this balance in my life, but I like my work. For me, work is fun. I like this. I like financial education. I like the companies that I'm working with. I like what we're doing. I like our purposes. I like our missions. So for me, work is fun. I don't know what else I would do if I wasn't working. But I had the flexibility that if somebody wants to come over and hang out, we can go to the gym in the middle of the day. We can go and do something for a Tuesday. We can go and do something on a weekend. I have the ability to do that. But for me to be able to get to that point, I had to put on a lot more work than everybody else to be able to achieve more of that balance today. The second thing that wealthy people do is they believe that they can control their own fortunes. See, the majority of non-wealthy people believe that success is luck. It's 80% luck, 20% skill. But for wealthy people who have achieved success, they think it's the opposite, 80% skill, 20% luck. And when I say skill, this doesn't mean how smart you are or how hardworking you are. It's the effort, the risk, the trial and error, and the work that you put in. 
I'm a real estate investor. I started investing in real estate after the 2008 crash and I got very fortunate with the timing because where I am in Michigan, real estate was hit very hard by the real estate crash and you were able to find real estate deals in good areas for under $20,000, under $10,000 in some instances and you could find great homes for a long period of time for under $30,000 in good areas. And when I talk about this, a big comment that I hear is, wow, you got so lucky. And yes, I got very fortunate in terms of timing. I got very fortunate that I was able to start investing in real estate when prices were so depressed. So I was able to go out and buy way more real estate than I could have if the prices were where they are today. However, I wasn't the only person that had access to cash then. Actually, people had way more cash than I did. I was still in college when I started investing in real estate. The only money that I had that I was investing in real estate was the money that I was earning from my event planning company. There were people in college that had way more money than I did. There were people that were older than me that had way more money than I did, that had access to more money, that had better connections at banks, that had way more resources and tools, but they weren't doing what I did. I took a risk. Most people didn't. And this is where you have to understand that luck plays a part. But the harder you work, the more things you do, the more you learn, the more risk you take, the more failures you have, the more screw-ups you have, the luckier you will become. When you work harder, you will see more opportunities because the majority of people haven't gotten there to see the opportunity. It's like walking through a dark room and each step you take, more lights turn on. You can't see the opportunity. You can't see the things in the room unless you take the next step. The next step might be you going out and trying something, you going out and failing. Failing is a part of success. You're gonna learn way more from your failures, from your screw ups, from your mistakes, from the things that you do wrong, than you will from the things that you do right. And it sucks, because it sucks failing. I still fail and screw up in things today. And now they're way more expensive than they were 10 years ago. But this is your real life tuition. That's how you learn. And you gotta be willing to try. Many times we get caught up in this idea that we have to do things perfectly. That if I'm going to do something, I got to do it right. I don't want to make a mistake. I want to make sure I found the right career. I want to make sure I have the right business idea. I want to make sure I have the right side hustle idea. I want to make sure before I spend a penny that I have the perfect idea. Well, every time you do that, you're missing out on the days and the opportunities and the trials that you could be doing now. And these are things that you can't get back. You can always change the business idea in the future. You can always take another class. You can always take another coaching. You can always do something else. But right now, your time and that learning is so important. People don't go broke by trying things. People don't go broke by learning. People go broke by not doing anything. People go broke by blowing their money on things that they don't need. This is where you gotta understand that the opportunities that you'll see are based off of what education you have and what experience you have. You can't just go out and find the opportunities. You have to be able to identify them and being able to identify them comes with a whole bunch of mistakes and a whole bunch of experience and you can't get that experience without going through the mistakes. I got lucky with YouTube. The YouTube gods blessed my channel and they made one of my videos go viral back in 2017 and that allowed my channel to grow and that allowed me to grow and that allowed me to grow my other businesses and that allowed me to build new businesses. That was luck but it also came with a bunch of effort because I was making videos when nobody was watching. I was making videos when I had to hit the refresh button a hundred times, that way it looked like my video had a hundred views. I was making videos when I was still going to law school. I was making videos while I was running another business. For me, YouTube was fun. I didn't start YouTube with the idea of making money. This was a hobby for me when I got started because I got screwed over in another business that I was running and I was so upset that I got screwed over that I started making videos about how to launch a business without getting screwed over. I started talking about financial education and investing because these were things I never grew up learning. And then my YouTube channel started to take off and that spurred a whole different line of business growth and business development for me that I never would have expected. Yeah, I got lucky, but I also worked very hard. I was making a lot of videos and I still make a lot of videos while doing a lot of different things. And I also had the education to make the videos. And I got that education from my experience and my experiences were very painful with a lot of mistakes and a lot of expensive mistakes. So all these things start to build on top of one another where it's not just you do one thing and then the success shows up in front of you. You do one thing, you screw up, you try something else. You do this thing, you screw up and you try something else. You do this thing, you screw up and now you keep starting to progress a little bit higher each and every time. But you have to keep trying and failing and pivoting and trying and pivoting and failing. 
every entrepreneurial and financial thing that I did over the last 15 years, from playing the drum at Indian weddings called the Dole, to going out and hosting parties in college, to starting wholesaling real estate when I was in between college and law school, to starting a business and getting screwed over, to having an e-commerce store online, to doing all these things, each one of them taught me something which helped me get to where I am today. It wasn't a direct response, but it was like boom, 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 and each one of these things teach you something which takes you one step further and you might not see it immediately but it teaches you something and the thing that you learn will make you one step smarter one step better and that's how you get to where you want to go and this brings me to the third point is that wealthy people are not looking for a step-by-step -step blueprint on how to become successful because the reality is that these step-by-step -step systems are just headlines and headlines are head lies let me give you a little secret about the internet because headlines on the internet are not there to inform you. They're not there to teach you. They're there to do one thing. They're there to get you to click on something. And so a headline, while it might seem like you just got to follow this five-step blueprint to become a millionaire or the six-step blueprint to make six figures a year, well, that headline isn't telling you the full story. And this is where you want to dig a little bit deeper. Sometimes the headline might dig you into content, which is very useful. Other times it might dig you into a scam. In the entrepreneurial world, when you're just blindly following what somebody else does, you're never going to get any traction because you're just playing in somebody else's shadows. You're never going to be first place, you're never going to be second place, you're never even going to be third place because you're just playing in the shadows of people who are successful. And why would somebody want to follow you when they can follow somebody who's more successful than you, probably doing the same thing that you're doing, but better? When you blindly try to follow any system or any formula, you're going to end up mediocre at best. Now you can learn from what people are doing. You can try to copy what other people do and you can understand why they're doing it. But when you understand how they do it, that's when you got to be able to apply what successful people do to you. Because when you can apply what other people do to you, now you have the ability to see some real success because you're not just blindly copying what they're doing because they're already doing it. If you're trying to copy what they do, well, you're too late. It's already been done. But if you can apply the concepts and now create something else, well, now you just opened up a whole new world of opportunity where now you can create that opportunity for yourself too. And this could be a business idea, a side hustle idea, or even with your investments. Warren Buffett has to disclose his investments because Berkshire Hathaway, his company, is a publicly traded company. And people will try to do the same things that Warren Buffett does, but people don't get the same returns as Warren Buffett. Now, one of the reasons is because Warren Buffett has a lot of money and he can influence the stock price and he has some preferred shares. But secondly, people also don't have the same know-how as Warren Buffett. They don't know the reasons why he bought. They don't understand the goals of why he bought. They don't understand his time horizon. They don't understand his risk horizon. And all these things are going to impact your investments differently than what Warren Buffett does. So as soon as you try to copy what someone else is doing, yeah, maybe you might see some average returns, but you're never going to be able to see the great returns. You're never going to see that great wealth because you're always trying to copy in somebody else's footsteps. The real success now is understanding learning, and finding opportunities for yourself. How do you do that? Well, it goes back to that financial education. Learning. How do you learn? Well, you can learn by reading. You learn by watching YouTube videos. You learn by buying books. You learn by taking courses. You learn by doing coaching. You learn by actually doing it. These are how you learn. And you also learn by making mistakes. Now, when you do this, you learn, well, that's how you start to find better opportunities. That's how you get better returns. That's how you start to make decisions for yourself. And that's where now you can see the much bigger upside. By the way, if you are an entrepreneur or a business owner and you haven't joined Business Briefs, which is my free newsletter for entrepreneurs and business owners, which keeps you up to date on business trends, entrepreneurial innovation ideas, on what's happening with funding, and what's happening in the business news, that way you can make better decisions in your business, well, you might want to consider joining because it's completely free and it's an amazing resource for entrepreneurs to help you make better decisions in your business. So if you haven't joined Business Briefs yet, I'll put the link to how you can join Business Briefs down in the description below. The fourth thing that wealthy people do is they know how to take care of others because the reality is you cannot become extremely wealthy all by yourself. You need a team and you need a support system because you can't do everything yourself. And this is where you have to know how to give and how to take care of other people. Just recently, I was sitting down with an attorney partner of mine. I have my legal referral firm. And what he was telling me was, I can't wait until this round of elections, the midterms is over. Because according to him, he was like, man, this is costing you so much money because I got to pay the Democrat candidates. I got to pay the Republican candidates. And then I got to pay off all the judges. 
And Oz is kind of laughing and talking to him. And essentially what he's saying is he has to make sure that whoever is in power knows who he is and respects him and likes him. And how does he have to do that? Well, he's got to buy the Democrats, he's got to buy the Republicans, and he's got to buy the judges. He's got to pay them. Well, I guess you can't technically say he's buying them, but he's paying them. That way he can take care of them. That way if he needs them, they can take care of him. Now, you can hate it or love it, but the way it works in business is if you take care of others, they will sometimes take care of you. If you don't take care of others, they will never take care of you. And this is where you got to be able to take care of the people that are important and you have to be able to give. This might be employees, this might be your business partners, these might be your clients, these might be vendors, these are people that are in your business, that are involved with the things that you're doing that you have to make sure that you're taking care of, that way they keep coming back to you. One of the things that I do, it's a very simple thing that I do, is when I go out to eat with people, I always, always, always try to pay for the bill because I never want to have to owe anybody else anything. I don't really consider paying for the bill owing somebody something, but I don't want somebody to potentially hold it against me that, hey, I bought you dinner that one time right there, a really nice restaurant now you got to do this for me I want to avoid those types of situations as much as possible so I always offer to pay and the fifth thing that 99% of wealthy people do is they take risks and like I was saying earlier you could take two types of risks you have two different types of currencies that you can risk your time and your money and in the beginning, if you don't have a lot of money, well, you got to take the risks with your time. See, what a lot of people do, which I don't recommend because it's not something that I would do, is they say, I don't have any money to go out and start this business idea. So what I'm going to do to make up for that is I'm going to go into debt. And now you start borrowing money to start a business idea that you don't know if it's going to succeed or not, especially if you've never started a business before. But the one guarantee that you have now is you're going to have to pay back this debt plus interest. And so this is where I don't recommend you start off a business with debt because that's very risky, especially if you have no idea how to start a business, especially if you've never started a business before. Instead of sacrificing that money, how about you go out and invest more of your time, the effort, the energy, the learning, the figuring it out, the hustle. Because if you can do that, well now, not only are you gonna know how to use your time better, you're gonna know how to get a better return on your money, and you're gonna be much more picky on how you spend your money. I used to do some business consulting here and there, and I talked about a business that I consulted a few years ago. And this business was a byproduct of the startup boom, where this company order had raised hundreds of thousands of dollars from different people, but she wasn't making any money, and she brought me on to see what she could do to turn her business around. And she had this amazing office, where people were running around, and their rollerblades in the office. They had these glass doors, glass windows, hardwood flooring. Like it was beautiful, but they were making no money. And so I'm going through her numbers and she was losing money on every sale because she was spending so much money in advertising. She didn't know her customer acquisition cost. And I come in and I'm looking at this and I'm asking her, how did you even manage to get here? And she said, well, my investors wanted me to bring on more customers and my marketing teacher said that we have to do this, that way we can lower our customer acquisition costs later on. Well, here's the reality. Sometimes you gotta take risks. Sometimes you're gonna do things, but you need to understand that having too much money is also a disease because when you have too much money, you're gonna be much more likely to blow money on things that don't produce any results because the reality is rolling around in skateboards and rollerblades in your office is not gonna bring you a higher ROI. Now, anybody can fall into that too much money disease. I have fallen into it as well because I wanted to build other things in my company like my blog, the Minority Mindset blog for a long time, but I never had time to actually spend to come up with a blog plan to actually strategize the blog. So what did I do? I hired people to run the blog. I hired writers, I hired editors, I hired writing staff, and then I hired an agency to manage it all. And I was spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to build this blog, which made me no money. And then we ultimately stopped working on the blog. That way we can refocus our energy onto businesses and products that are actually making real money where I'm putting my effort and my time and things that I grow because well, I don't wanna keep spending hundreds of thousands of dollars into things that just keep sucking money, but don't give me any money back. So I said at one point, well, this is too much. And so we shut that down and reallocated our resources, moved the people into different divisions of my companies. That way now we have people doing things that are actually productive. And that was just a huge financial loss where it was just money gone, where I risked my money and I got nothing back. That's part of the risks of taking risks because sometimes you can lose 
Sometimes it's going to be money. Sometimes it's going to be time. In the beginning, if you don't have a lot of money, it's better for you to risk your time because at least now with that time, you can learn something. Once you start making some money, that's when you can start investing some money and you can invest this money into your own business idea, into your own education. And even if you don't have a business, you can still invest this into your own financial education because the reality is 99% of people don't go broke by investing in their financial education. They go broke by spending their money badly on other things. But if you invest in your own financial education, whether it's YouTube videos, whether it's books, whether it's classes, whether it's courses, whether it's coaching, you are probably not gonna go broke if you're actually investing in something that is there to improve your financial education. But this is where you gotta be willing to invest and then actually take action on your financial education because if you're not willing to take action, then stop wasting your money on it. If you don't wanna be poor financially, you gotta ask yourself, why do you wanna have more money? What is the driving force inside of you that wants to have more money? What's interesting is how your answer changes over time. Like when you're young, chances are you want to have money. That way you can have a nice car, you can show off on Instagram, that way you can have all the nice things. But as you get older, those nice things start to have less value and the freedom that money provides you starts to have more value. That way you can just enjoy life, have money to spend time with your family and just be able to be free. A simple kind of exercise that you can do with yourself to understand the importance of having money is just asking yourself Yourself, what does not having money do? What does not having money bring? Because when you don't have money, that comes with stress. Now you gotta worry about how you're gonna pay your bills. That comes with financial pain because now you can't get your spouse what they want. You can't send your kids off to college without a whole bunch of debt and you can't go on those nice vacations with their family. So if you don't wanna not have money, you gotta avoid the five habits that are keeping you poor in the first place. That's the five things that I'm gonna be going over in this video. But before I do that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash that thumbs up button below. The first habit that keeps so many people poor is having a poor mindset. You might've heard people talk about the difference between being poor and being broke, where being broke is a financial thing, you just don't have any money right now, but being poor is deeper. Being poor is where you have a broke mindset. When you have a poor mindset, it doesn't matter what you do out here, it doesn't matter how much money you make, it doesn't matter if you achieve wealth on paper, you are not able to live your life because you're still poor up here. So if you wanna become wealthy, the first thing you gotta do is break out of this poor mindset. And one thing that you gotta do to do that is you need to stop finding the problems with everything. You need to start finding the opportunities. You know, I don't consider myself the smartest person or the most talented person, but one quality that I think I do have is the ability for me to find the opportunity when I see a problem. I mean, that's the whole reason why Minority Mindset started in the first place. I was working on a sock business and I got scammed by a fake marketing company and I lost a lot of money. And then I had to make a decision. Okay, what do I do about this? Do I just complain about it and cry about it or do I do something about it? And so I decided to come on to social media and create this Instagram page called Minority Mindset where I help people launch a business without getting screwed over. And I created this class on Udemy, which is no longer there, on how to launch a business without getting screwed over. That eventually grew, our Instagram page grew, and then we grew to like 17,000 followers on Instagram when I had the idea, okay, maybe I should start a YouTube channel. So now I start a YouTube channel, and interestingly, as soon as we hit like 17,400 followers on Instagram, our Instagram page got hacked and it was deleted. Now I had almost no subscribers on YouTube, I had no Instagram page, no following left on Minority Mindset. I could have ended the thing right there, but I was like, you know what? This is an opportunity for me to now work even harder on YouTube. So now I dove even deeper onto YouTube, and now we have a YouTube channel with close to 900,000 YouTube subscribers, and we're building a whole financial media company all because of a problem that I faced. Now, I'm not trying to say, look at me, look at what I did. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say you gotta understand that all of us face problems. I talked about my worst real estate deal ever on YouTube. That way you can see the problems that I faced in real estate. Now I've been able to do much bigger deals because that problem showed me the opportunity and how to do real estate the right way. I even talked about when I got sued in real estate. That was a problem and then I learned how to protect myself legally and I learned how to be a better real estate investor. We are all going to face problems. That's a part of life. Now. We cannot change what this problem is, but we can change how we react to it. And the way you react to it is gonna determine how you live your life. Are you gonna live a wealthy life, whether we're talking about financially or just happily, or are you gonna live a poor life? Look, this is reality. We cannot change what happens out here, but we can change how we react. And so if you just beat yourself up and you just blame everybody else for every problem that you have going on in your life, you are not going to improve anything, okay? So now just ask yourself, when something goes wrong, what can you do? 
You can complain about it, you can point fingers, or you can do something about it. These are typically the only three options that you have, and I want you to look at what can you do about it to better yourself. Because complaining about things and blaming others doesn't get you anywhere, but doing something about it can find you more opportunities to help you live a better life. The second habit that is keeping so many people poor is you are getting too comfortable with debt. I was at the mall a few years ago. This image is like burned into my brain, and I was at the checkout counter. And in front of me were these two girls who were buying some clothes. And they go up to the cashier and they check out and the cashier says, can I interest you in a brand new store of credit card? If you get approved and you open it today, I can save you 15% off your order. The girl said, yes, that would be great. And then he goes away to go see if they can get approved. And the girls literally started praying in front of me saying, please God, help us get approved for this credit card. The guy comes back and he says, good news, you've been approved and you can save 15% off your order today. And the girl started jumping up and down because they just saved 15% on their order because of this brand new credit card. Well, look, credit cards can be a great tool. Like I only shop with my credit card, but when you're getting a credit card just so you can save 15% off your order, chances are you're not using a credit card for the right reasons. Chances are if you're one of those people, you're gonna be going into credit card debt because a credit card to you is just a free money printer machine and now you can buy whatever you want and pay it later. And you know what? This is the society that we live in and it's only going to get harder. There are more and more companies coming out to help this whole idea of you being able to buy something now and pay later, which means you get to be broke now and broke later. You've probably seen it if you shop online. When you go to the checkout page, there's a little button that says, would you like to pay for this order in installments? What does that mean? Now you don't got to pay all this money today. You just pay it off in six months and add a little bit of interest on top of it. Back in the day, you'd hear people talking about getting big mortgage and then financing the car, and then maybe using a home equity line of credit to buy a boat. Nowadays, it's a little bit different because people are not just financing your home, your car, and your boat, but you're financing your clothes, your furniture, your electronics, your cell phone, your laptop, and everything in between. And let's not get started with student loans. I graduated with kids who had six figures, more than $100,000 with the student loans, graduated school making $14 an hour. This habit is gonna be hard to break away from because our society is going deeper and deeper and deeper into debt where it's just completely normal to be drowning in debt. That's just what everybody does. And so now if you wanna go on a nice vacation, you don't gotta wait until you can actually afford it. You just put it on your credit card or you just finance it or pay it off in installments because that's what everyone else is doing. You wanna go on a nice vacation? Go ahead, pay for it later. Now you're spending the rest of your life paying off that trip to Cancun, plus interest. But at least you got to eat some guacamole. The third habit keeping you poor is sticking around in a toxic environment. The internet is great because it has opened the doors to opportunity and education to everybody in the world who has access to the internet. But the downfall with the internet is if you get sucked into this negative or toxic environment, you get sucked into this deep rabbit hole where it gets really hard to get out because now you're surrounded by people not just in your real life, but also in this digital life of everybody who just keeps talking about gambling and blowing your money and spending your money and all these things that are not helping you achieve wealth. They're just keeping you poor. We all wanna have a sense of community and I'll talk about our physical real life communities in just a minute, but we all wanna have this community in our digital life too. And so people get drawn into these digital communities whether it's in investing or sports betting and the communities that get the most traction that are the most hot are typically the ones that involve the most risk. You have a lot of people jumping into the stock market which is great but you have a lot of new people entering the stock market to trade these high margin option trades even though many of these people have never traded a stock or invested their money a day in their life. It's the same with sports betting. We have this whole new industry of sports betting with companies like FanDuel and DraftKings that kind of create this community around people betting their money on sports. When you gamble, it doesn't matter what the odds are. At the end of the day, the house always wins. If the people all around you, whether we're talking digitally or physically in your real life, are all broke, are all drowning in debt and are all making bad financial decisions, what do you think you're gonna do? Because when you're in that community, when you're in that toxic environment, these things are normal. It is normal for you to be paycheck to paycheck and it's abnormal for you to save money and invest money. And so now when you're in that toxic environment, it is just normal to continue being broke and continue complaining about life. But if you can transplant yourself from this environment to a different environment where people are talking about investing and living smartly, especially when it comes to finances, now if you're talking about gambling and living paycheck to paycheck, you're not gonna fit in this community because this environment doesn't want people like that. That's why your surroundings and your environment play such a big part and how you live your life. And if you wanna go from this toxic environment to this growth environment, the first thing you gotta do 
is you got to start learning because if you just start going into these other people, they're not going to know who you are. They're not going to want to talk to you. And so the first thing you got to do is start learning, start reading books, change this environment you're in, in the digital world, start watching good YouTube videos where you're actually learning things, you know, minority mindset, start learning things that will help produce a more growth mindset and a wealth building mindset, because now you're going to start thinking differently. You know, I think we all kind of have to go through this transition phase and kind of change who we're around because the people who were around when we're younger might not be the people that's best for us as we start to grow. Because when I was younger, when I was in college, a lot of my friends were all about blowing their money, having all these nice things, having this kind of real exotic looking life. And as I started to realize that it's not for me, that's when I had to start taking a step back and distancing myself. And I did that especially after I started reading these books, talking about this other life that I have never experienced. And that's when I started looking, I kind of started this new journey and new people started coming in my life naturally. Plus the easiest thing that you can do is change what digital environment that you're in. What are you absorbing on the internet? Because as you do that, you're gonna find new digital communities that will help you grow. The fourth habit keeping you poor is your priorities are all in the wrong place. Because what happens to a lot of people is they prioritize making money. But you don't understand how money really plays a part in your life. Because yeah, money is important, but at what cost? Because you know what, there's other assets in our life that are more important than money, like time. You can always make more money. There's no limit to how much money you can have, but there's a limit to how much time that we have. And so now one of the things that you gotta do if you wanna stop being poor, is you gotta start valuing your time more. Because your time is your most valuable asset. If you do not treat your time wisely, it doesn't matter what you're doing with your money. There's a couple ways that I want you to look at this. The first is really just a straight financial perspective. If you can make $20 an hour from working at your job or wherever you're working, and you are spending a lot of your time doing things that are not making you at least $20 an hour in value, like you're mowing the lawn, which you don't like doing, and you can pay somebody else to do that for $10 an hour, now you are losing out on the opportunity to make an extra $10 an hour because you can just pay somebody $10 an hour and work an hour and make $20. So the first thing you gotta do is start putting a price on your time. Because if you're spending all your time doing things that are not producing any value for you, whether we're talking about cutting the grass, where you can hire somebody to do it at a cheaper cost than you could do it, or we're talking about playing video games all day, well, now you gotta put a price on your time and see how much money you're throwing away by not using your time. The second part of this coin is you gotta know how to use your time in the most efficient way possible because there's only 24 hours in a day and you cannot work 24 hours. So you gotta understand how can you extract the most value out of your time that way you can attract the most money. This is where you gotta understand the difference between active money and passive money because active money is where you're physically working to earn money. This might be you going to your job. There's a limit to how many hours you can work because you gotta sleep, you gotta go to the bathroom, you gotta spend time with your family. So there's a limit to how much active money that you can earn. But there's no limit to how much passive money that you can earn because when you talk about passive money, this isn't money that you're physically working to earn. This is money that you're attracting thanks to your money. So when you earn this active money, you wanna take some of this money and send it off to attract you this passive money. That way, now you have more money coming in and you're using your time the best way possible because you're using the time to attract this active money, but you're also getting this passive money without having to physically invest more of your time. But in order for you to attract this passive money, you got to understand the number five thing that's keeping so many people poor. You're not paying yourself. Interesting, right? We're talking about the habits that keep people poor and only now are we talking about how you pay yourself. When the majority of people make money, they get paid, then you got to pay your taxes because the IRS wants to cut. And now with the money that you have left, you're going to pay your rent or your mortgage. You're going to pay your car payment. You're going to pay your student loans. You're going to pay for your utility you're gonna pay for your phone bill, you're gonna pay for your laptop, you're gonna pay for your furniture financing plan, you're gonna pay to go out with your friends, you're gonna pay for this vacation that you went on last year, and then if there's any money left, you're gonna save it. But that's why we don't think like the majority of people. I mean, that is why we're the minority mindset. Because if you want to not be poor, you gotta know how to use your money the right way, and that includes paying yourself before you pay everybody else around you and before you make everybody else rich. When you pay a housing payment, do you wanna know who's getting rich? It's not you, it's your bank or your landlord. When you pay a car payment, do you wanna know who's getting rich? It's not you, it's your car company or your bank. When you pay a phone payment, do you wanna know who's getting rich? It's not you, it's your phone company. When you go out to eat, do you wanna know who's getting rich? 
It's not you, it's the restaurant. Before you go out and you make everybody else rich, I need you to start using your money to make yourself rich first, and that means paying yourself before you pay everybody else. Now, when I say pay yourself first, I'm not saying reward yourself. I'm not saying go over to the mall, go to the Gucci store, and buy yourself a brand new scarf, because the person that's getting rich when you buy that brand new scarf is not you, it's the Gucci store. I mean pay yourself, that way you are getting rich first. So when I say pay yourself, the first thing you gotta ask yourself is, who's getting rich when I pay myself? Psst, the answer is supposed to be you. The way you do that now is every time you get paid, I want you to take a little bit of money and put some aside for your savings, that way you have cash in case an emergency happens, that way you never have to worry about going into debt again, and then I want you to take some cash and put it towards your investments, because now you wanna buy some assets, some investments that are gonna pay you for owning them. An asset will be something like investing your money in the stock market, or investing in real estate investment properties, or investing in a business. Now, when you're investing your money in these assets, you're doing it for the purpose of making money because now when you own these assets, you are the one that's getting paid. You can compare that to something like a liability, which is where now you're going to the mall, you're buying yourself a brand new wardrobe, or when you buy yourself a nice car, or where you go on a nice vacation, these things are nice and they make you look rich, but they keep you poor. Because now when you buy these things, you are giving your money to somebody else and you have no money coming back. With an asset, you're giving your money to this thing, that way you own this asset, that way now you can keep having more money come back to you. This is the financial part of becoming wealthy. Because if you do not do this, I don't care how much money you make. I don't care if you make a million dollars a year, you're gonna continue to be poor. Because when you're paying everybody else before you pay yourself, even if you make a million dollars a year, you might have really nice stuff. You might live in a big house, you might drive a fancy car, you might wear expensive clothes, you might go on exotic vacations, but you have nothing left for yourself. Because if the income went away, if your money went away, what are you left with? Nothing. You have a whole bunch of liabilities that you cannot get your money back from, because when you own a liability, you buy yourself a brand new car, guess what? If you go to sell that car three years later, you're gonna get pennies for what you paid for it. Wealthy people get rich and stay rich by living below their means and always, no matter how much money they make, always putting money aside to pay themselves first because if you wanna become wealthy and if you do not wanna be poor, you have to. You have to prioritize your wealth before you prioritize everybody else's wealth. So before you pay Apple, before you pay Lululemon, before you pay Chipotle for the extra guac, before you pay Gucci, you gotta put that money in your wallet. You gotta put that money in your assets. That way you can build your wealth before you make everybody else rich. Well, we saw a massive amount of people sell out of their 401ks near the bottom of the 2020 stock market crash. Because they're convinced it's just gonna keep going lower and it's like, I gotta get out now. You just see your portfolio in the red, you lose 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%, you get scared and you're like, I wanna save whatever money that I can because you don't understand